Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at a new Wi-Fi tool that I've just recently gotten, and that is Ekahau. So Ekahau was nice enough to give me a one-year license to Ekahau AI Pro, as well as the Sidekick 2, which is shown on screen. For this first video, we're just gonna be doing a Wi-Fi design for a build-out that I'm currently working on for a shared working space. This is on a seventh floor of a building and you'll be seeing us do the cabling as well as the AP placement and cameras. If you want to learn more about Ekahau, make sure to check out the link in the description below. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit my website at mactelecomnetworks.com. Now let's get right into AI Pro and the design that we're going to be working on. Now we're inside of AI Pro and there's a couple of things that we could do here. The first thing that we could do is design. The next thing we could do is inspect. We could do survey and we could do the live data. All we're going to be worrying about today is the design. And it says right in the middle of the screen, let's add a floor plan to the project. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So we're going to click on add. And I've loaded the seventh floor of this project that we're currently working on, which is quite big. Within this floor, we have about 200 to 250 cables going in. We have about 16 cameras and we have eight Wi-Fi access points. We are going to be using the AI access point placement over here to see where they would like us to place it, but we might have to change things around a little bit. Now with AI Pro, we could add different files for our floor plan. This is just a PNG, but you could add a JPEG or you could add a CAD file as well as some others. But the next thing we need to do now that we have our floor plan added, we need to make a measurement. And these measurements are very important. If we're off just by a few inches, that could cause a big difference in what we're actually seeing in our Wi-Fi environment. Now on most floor plans, the architects do put the scaling out and that's something that you could use and we will be using it here, but you'll want to validate that those measurements are accurate. So you could use something like a laser measurer as shown here, and I will put a link down below where you'd find one of these. Now to set the scale, all we need to do is go to the left-hand corner and this is our scaling icon. It kind of looks like a ruler. We could see in the boardroom, we have this line going from the middle of the boardroom to the middle of the receptionist area. This is 11 feet. It's a little hard to see because it's a bit blurry. All I need to do is click in the middle of that line and then drag it down. Now we could see that it's asking for how many feet and I'm gonna type in 11 and I'm gonna press enter. If you use meters, we could also change that. So we could go into file and then we could go down to preferences. So you could either use meter or feet and that's great. We don't really use meters here in Canada. Now that we've done our scale, and again, the scale is very important, we need to start drawing in our walls. And we could see that we have this wall icon here and we could hit the drop down menu. This is just for a straight wall and that's all I'm gonna use for this video, but we have a rectangular wall or we have a predefined wall. Once we click on the wall, we have this other drop down menu. Currently, it's just over drywall. So if I hit the drop down again, we could see all these different type of material and we can change the values of them if we'd like, but I'm just gonna leave them at the default. But scrolling down, what I wanna look for first is the wall concrete. On the outer perimeter of this building, it's all concrete, but then in the offices, it's glass. So what we're gonna do to start drawing the walls, I'm just gonna click on the top left and you can see it's starting to draw in the concrete. Instead of switching different materials from concrete to glass, we could just have it all concrete and then we could change it out after, but we need to create pivot points. So this is the end line for the concrete, so I'm gonna left click. This will be a window and then we're gonna left click again, a concrete again, and then a window, concrete, and a window. This is gonna take me a few minutes to do, so we're just gonna speed through it. Now to zoom in and out of the drawing, all we need to do is use the mouse scroll button. Now, if we wanna move the drawing at all, all we need to do is hit the space bar and we could move it up and down left and right. But now what we need to do, we need to change all the windows out that are currently concrete. So I'm gonna select the first window and then I'm just gonna hit control and we're gonna click on every other window that's in place. Now I can't see the window in the bottom corner. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna hold down the space bar and I'm just gonna move down and we're gonna select all the ones at the bottom. Same goes for this uh, left hand side. We're going to select the last two windows and then what we're going to do, we're going to go to the material type. So we can see at the top it's wall concrete. We're going to hit the drop down and this is going to be a thick window for the outside and we're going to click on it 
and that changes our material for us, which saves a lot of time from switching in between the different material types. So next we gotta do the interior walls, and the interior walls, they're pretty well all glass and drywall, but first let's start off with the elevator shafts. If we click on the drop down, we could see that there is an elevator shaft setting. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna draw around the elevators. Now the elevators are done, I'm gonna hit the drop down again and we're gonna go to drywall. I'm gonna leave it all on drywall for now and then we'll do those pivot points again and we'll change them out for the materials that they are. So again, we're gonna speed through this and then we'll get those materials set accurately. Now we have all the interior walls drawn in, but they're all showing drywall, even though a lot of this is glass and we do have a lot of doors. So the first thing that I'm gonna pick to switch is all the doors. So again, all we need to do is click on the door and then hold control and keep going. So there are quite a few doors in this building and there is a lot of glass. All right, so I have the door selected and I did miss a couple, so we're gonna have to draw those on afterwards. But all we need to do now is the same thing. We need to hit the drop down menu and then we need to find the doors. So I'll scroll down a little bit and then we could see it's door hollow wood. They are actually gonna be having solid wood doors. So we'll click on that and it changes our doors for us. So now we have to change all the glass. So what we'll do, it's gonna be the exact same thing. Now, before we get to the really fun part, which is adding the access points with the AI Auto Planner, we need to put in inclusion zones and exclusion zones for the Wi-Fi. So how we're gonna go do that is with this icon. I'm gonna click the drop down menu, and then we're gonna go to the area tool. We want this whole area covered, except for the elevator shafts, the stairwells, and the washroom. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna click on the left-hand corner, I'm gonna drag it down. We're gonna go over to the right and then we're gonna go up to the top. I'm gonna click on the right click button to disengage it. And this will give us an area for Wi-Fi throughout the whole thing. But like I said, I don't want the elevators or the washrooms. So I'm gonna click the drop down again and we're gonna add in an exclusion area. For the exclusion area, we'll click on the elevator. We'll drag it down to the washrooms over to the right and then back up and we'll hit that right mouse button again and this will exclude these areas from getting Wi-Fi into our design. Now we have all of our walls drawn in. We have our inclusion and our exclusion areas. The fun could begin. So we're gonna click on the AI Auto Planner. From the AI Auto Planner, we have hundreds of different access points that we could choose. You could see just by scrolling down that they have pretty much any vendor that you could think of. We're gonna be using U6 Enterprise, so Ubiquity U6 Enterprise, for this build out. And I already have it under the suggested tab. I'm gonna click on the Ubiquity U6 Enterprise and we could change some of the options if we'd like by going to the advanced options. You'd see which access point it is, the transmit power, we could optimize for capacity or we could optimize for mobile devices. We're just gonna leave it at default for now and I'm gonna go ahead and press create. Once I press create, you're gonna see little dots go on the screen and then eventually some access points that are on the map. So here you can see it's trying a bunch of different types to see where we wanna place APs. And now we have our heat map right on our screen. And it did 846 different iterations to see the best placement for these access points. Now, another thing that we could do, we could also do the AI channel planner. So I'm gonna click on the channel planner and you could see account for all APs in this project and we could disable unnecessary 2.4 gigahertz radios. I'm gonna press create and that's gonna change the channels for us. So we could see on this access point for the 2.4, we have channel 11 on here. And then these three access points, we don't have any 2.4 at all. If we look at our band selection down at the bottom, right now the map is just showing us the five gigahertz, but we could look at our 2.4 coverage and we could look at our six coverage. But at the beginning, I said I have eight access points for this design, and we've already come up with the design for this, and I'll show you that. And this is the final design that we'll be going with for the seventh floor shared workspace. 
you'd see that we have all eight access points here on the screen. If we needed to move the access point around, say this meeting room had drywall ceilings and we couldn't get a cable there, we could grab on the access point and we will see the heat map change. But I'm gonna place it back there because we already have cable up top. This is showing full coverage for the five gigahertz and we're doing it by Ekahau's best practices. So that's minus 70 dBm. We could change that if we want it to be 65 dBm, but we'll leave it at that for now. We'd also look at the 2.4, which our coverage is pretty good. In these areas here where it's showing it's a bit of a gray color, that's going up to minus 80 dBm, which we should be operating on most devices at the five gigahertz anyway. And again, we could look at the six gigahertz. So that is just the initial design with the Ekahau AI Pro. The next thing we need to do, we need to get all the hardware installed from the design that we've gone with, and then we need to validate it with the Sidekick 2. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel to see the actual validation and the on-site job. If you'd like to learn more about Ekahau again, go to the link below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.